God, Bishop Brandon Jacobs. Come on, clap your hands and receive them with a hearty amen. Come on, lift those hands all over this place. Come on, let me hear you worship him all over this place. Hallelujah. Come on, worshipers. If you're on this live and you're in your home, I just want you to begin to open your mouth and begin to glorify God. Hallelujah. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Lord, you're in the room. Oh, come on. If you got a prayer language, I want you to begin to pray in it. Lord, we thank you for being in the room, Jesus. You're a holy God. Father, we thank you tonight for what's getting ready to happen. We thank you for your anointing in this place. We thank you that I have not seen. We thank you that ear have not heard. We thank you that it is yet to enter the heart of man the great things you're getting ready to do tonight. Lord, we understand that tonight is an assignment. We know that you have sent us, O oh God, to declare and to speak what thus saith the Lord unto these people tonight. And so now, Father, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that, God, you would move flesh out of the way. I pray, O oh God, that you would fill my belly with your glory. And I pray that you, O oh God, would allow me to speak what needs to be said tonight. Let us not be here for shape, form, or fashion. But, God, let us begin to do the things that you have assigned unto us. Spirit of the living God, Yeboshaya. Spirit of the living God, Rebe Katamahai. Spirit of the living God, Yeboshaya. Have your way now. And we thank you, O oh God, for what you're getting ready to do. If there are any sick on this life, I pray that you would heal. If there are any unsaved, I pray that you would save. I pray that the anointing will be so strong in this place that God will exude from this place and meet people in their home in so much that people will get filled with the Holy Ghost right where they are. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Oh, come on, church, help me pray. Have your way, God. Oh, koto rababaka. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Let your glory fill this place. Let your anointing be strong. And God will give you the praise for it. We'll give you the glory for it. We'll honor you for it. We'll lift your name on high for it. We'll magnify you for it. Because we know that it's already done. Hallelujah. Now, if you believe it, clap your hands all over this place. Open your mouth. shout, And somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. And we thank you. And we give you praise for it. And we call it done. In the mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. All those in agreement said, amen. I am honored to be here tonight to all of the wonderful people that are watching us on Facebook Live. Amen. To all of the pastors that are in the room, we want to say we are glad to be in this house on tonight. And we thank God for the awesome prophet. Amen. Prophet Adele, can we clap our hands for the man of God? Amen. Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. I know it's kind of a studio feel, but I come to have church tonight. Hallelujah to God. And so we thank God for the anointing that's on this man of God's life, a prophet indeed. And we thank God for what the Lord, amen, has anointed him to do and has called him to do in this hour. Hallelujah to the awesome man of God, his son tonight. Amen. Brother Jeffrey, we thank him. Amen. For the anointing of God that's on his life. God is just good. If you love him, won't you clap your hands all over this place and lift your voice unto God and give the Lord a high praise. For the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. I want you to meet me in Ephesians chapter 4. And I want to say this tonight as I believe that uh, I'm on an assignment and I'm, I'm going to case myself. Amen. Pastor Smith, through this word on tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I don't want to rush through it because I believe that God is doing something in our generation. Uh, prophet, I believe that we are living in what we would call a paradigm shift. There are some things that are shifting right before our very eyes. Uh, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. And I want to read one verse tonight, though I'll kind of deal uh, with the chapter in its entirety. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to look at verse 14. 
Uh, if you can stand, please stand in reverence of the word of God. Amen. If you're at home and you got it and you're watching on live, amen, just say, I got it, Bishop. I got it. I got it. I got it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. The Bible reads like this. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I want to speak from the subject tonight, a frigid wind, a frigid wind, a frigid wind. You can have your seats tonight. My brothers and sisters, as you can see by the sign of the time that we are living in very strange times. I will call these times weird. These are times that they could not prepare us for. We're living in a time where we're no longer going to church as we used to. And when we do come to church, we're like we are tonight, very distant from one another. We're living at a time where it looks like death has gripped the world. It's not just things happening in America, but all around the world, one virus has called people to die everywhere. We're living in a time where it looks like uh, those who are close to us are leaving by the dozens, leaving by the droves. It's, it's such a weird time that if somebody cough, even if they don't have the coronavirus, you, you run and like, hold up, wait a minute, get over there, scoot over some. Because of the times we are living in. We're living in a time where things are strange in politics. Things are strange in social justice. Things are strange in church. And things are even strange in family. We're living in a time where it looks like God says, I've got to shut things down so I can make what's important, important again. Uh, whether you believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, we're living in a time where your title doesn't matter. We're living in a time where, amen, what you drive doesn't matter. We're living in a time where what you wear doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter the community you live in. But if you can sense and feel and understand the reality of God, the only thing that seems to really be important to the believer is that my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. I know we don't do that kind of preaching anymore, and I know uh, it doesn't matter anymore about whether or not you are saved or whether or not you have a relationship with God, but I am living in that Matthew 16 reality where I understand what does it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his soul. And, and I want to warn you tonight that if you are not in that space, you need to check your reality because you can be here today, you can cough this evening, and you can be dead by morning. And if your soul isn't what is valuable to you in this season, you've got to check and see whether or not your relationship with God is in the right place. As we begin to delve in this epistle that Paul has written to the Corinthian church, Paul is writing to this church, amen, because this church is, is based at a seaport. And because it's based at a seaport, you will understand that there were many religions that had come in and that had come out of the church or the city of Ephesus. And while they were there, we will understand that the thrust of Paul writing to this church in Ephesus amen, is to confront the religions and the philosophies that were growing in that day. Paul was convinced and knew in his heart that the religion he had proclaimed, this gospel he had preached, this word of God that he had given was the only way of redemption.
redemption from sin and the only way to have true sonship and relationship with God. Let me put this in your soup while I'm in your kitchen and tell you, my brothers and sisters, that what's most important in this hour is that you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory. I, I got a little church over here. Amen. Somebody just ought to take a moment and praise God because I may not drive what I want to drive and I may not live where I want to live and I may not eat always where I want to eat, but I thank God that I am saved. I thank God that I am sanctified and I thank God, Lord, let me try it one more time. I thank God that I'm saved. Thank God that I'm sanctified and thank God that I'm filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, the challenge was the struggle for human minds as they sought the good life and not the God life. Uh, let, let me say it again. We, 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 we got to be careful in chasing the good life and, and not the God life. What, what, what does it mean to have everything you desire but to be out of sync with Jesus Christ? Paul offered my brothers and sisters that Christianity was more uh, than about provision, but it was about salvation. And this is what Paul understood. If my soul is right with God, and if I do what God has called me to do, then the blessings that God have in store for me are sure to come in due time. For beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper. My brothers and sisters, I just believe that you can be saved and prosperous at the same time. But I believe that you got to value one more than you value the other. Some of us, God can't trust us, hallelujah, with worldly gain because as soon as we get a little something, we lose focus on what God is calling us to be. So Paul suggests that the good life was having true confidence in Jesus Christ, that I'm living the God life in such a way that when others look at me, they can see the power and the presence of God that's down on the inside. So as Paul begins to write, and as he begins to write to them in this fourth chapter, Paul's aim in this fourth chapter of Ephesians is to deal with the arrogant deception uh, that is brought about by being disconnected. Ah, let me give it to you again. Paul's aim is to deal with the arrogant deception that is brought about by being disconnected. What Paul is suggesting is that you can come to church, you can lead praise and worship, you can preach in the pulpit, and you can be so arrogant in your gifting that you realize you're not even connected to God. I believe that part of the reason why we are living in a pandemic now is because we we have a whole lot of people who are gifted but lack the gift. Oh, glory to God. You can sing, but the gift of God is missing from your life, which causes us to be disconnected from what really matters. I want to tell somebody here tonight, I told New Zion Temple on Wednesday night in Bible study that the secret sauce in this season is not going to be how many keys you can go to in your sermonic presentation. The secret sauce is not going to be what, what Greek and Hebrew words you no, the secret sauce is not going to be how good you can riff while you're singing your song. The secret sauce is not going to be how you can roast with your tongue. But in this season, the secret sauce to your success is going to be the power of your consecrated life. How oh, glory to God when people try to figure out how you got to where you are. They'll have to look at what you do when nobody's watching. How do you behave when the camera is not on you? How do you behave when nobody knows what you're doing in private? What does your life look like when you ain't on social media? What does your life look like when cameras are not following you, trying to figure out where you are? And if you have no consecration, you're going to be living in a dangerous place. Oh, but I come to tell 
somebody uh, that power is stirred behind the mountain uh, power is stirred in the secret place uh, power is stirred uh, while you're by yourself uh, power is brought about uh, when you can turn your plate down uh, and you can lay before God uh, and you can declare something yeah, only come by fasting and pray. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, and I know we can't touch nobody, but put your mask on and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the season to consecrate until the Lord brings about a change down on the inside. Paul suggests that if we're going to be what we need to be, we must beware of our disconnections with God. He keeps encouraging the Ephesians church to be like-minded, to know where each and what another are in God, to be humble and to be meek. Paul, my brothers and sisters, he's concerned because the church is gifted but disconnected. Uh, yeah, nah, she, he's concerned. Huh? Glory to God because the church is gifted uh, but disconnected. Gifted uh, but disconnected. Gifted uh, but disconnected. Gifted uh, but disconnected. Gifted uh, but out of whack. Gifted uh, but missing what's most important. Gifted. Uh, and we got to be careful. Uh, I like your gift. It's wonderful. Uh, uh, but in this season, uh, I need somebody with an anointing. Ah, yeah, no shit. If you're on this live, I dare you begin to just write in the comments, this is the season. I need power. This is the season. I need to be anointed. I'm praying that the healing virtue of God come back in the church. I'm just crazy enough to believe that if we would consecrate enough, and if we'll get in the presence of God enough, hallelujah, that you ain't got to lay hands on nobody for them to be healed. But I believe that the anointing of God can be so strong in the atmosphere. Call me crazy. I understand. But I believe that the anointing of God can be so crazy and so heavy in the atmosphere huh, that if somebody come in huh, that's sick huh, whether it be cancer, the corona, HIV I don't care what it is. Huh, I believe that God is able to heal. Huh. And I'm not just talking about healing the physical body huh, but the greatest healing we need is not that which is physical huh? but the greatest healing we need is that which is soulish huh? it's that thing that's down on the inside huh? that's what Isaiah meant when he said he was wounded for our transgression huh? he was bruised huh? for our iniquity that's a soul thing huh? that had nothing to do with your physical ailments huh? but he was wounded to heal huh? your sin sick soul huh? and the chastisement huh? of my peace was upon him and with his 39 stripes we are healed and I just believe that if we can get the inside right the outside would follow if we can get the internal correct the external will line up somebody ought to declare it's an inside job it's an it's an inside job. And Paul, Paul starts off, glory to God, yeah. He starts off and he tells them in the beginning of the text, he says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy. Ah, glory to God. That you walk worthy. The Greek understanding of that is that you live a life worthy of the call that God has put on you. What Paul suggests is that the call is waiting. And if you're going to be able to walk worthy of the vocation, Paul suggests if you're going to be able to handle the call, he suggests if you're going to be able to handle the assignment, if you're going to be able to handle where God is trying to take you, he says your lifestyle and your gifting has to line up. And 
when your lifestyle and your gifting lines up, it's a collision for the anointing of God to be prevalent. Paul says you got to walk worthy. So he says in order for this to happen, in order for you to walk worthy of the call that God has put on your life with all lowliness and meekness, keeping the bond, keeping the unity and the bond of peace. He says in order for this to happen, he says you must submit to a greater authority. He goes all the way down and he begins to speak to us and he begins to tell us in verse 11 that this is the reason that I've gifted the church with what many will call the five or the fourfold ministry. Amen. When he talks about how he gave, amen, some pastors and teachers and apostles and prophets, hallelujah, and apostles, amen, for the perfecting of the church. What Paul is saying is because I know how wayward the church can be and because I know that the church can be out of line in his giftedness, Paul says I have given you a Authorities, I have gifted you with authorities that these authorities might bring the church into a place of order. He says, I've sent these gifts for perfection, hallelujah, glory to God, not to be at odds or not to be in competition. I've sent gifts for perfection, not competition. I've sent gifts for perfection and not competition. I've sent gifts for perfection and not competition. But my brothers and sisters, if your gift is going to be what God has called it to be, you've got to submit your gift to another gift. Mm. Glory to God. You've got to be submitted to a greater authority. My brothers and sisters, divisions happen many times because of the lack of submission. Arrogance is in place because of the lack of submission. I have never seen it like I see it today. We are raising an arrogant church where we think we are all that because God has opened up a door for us. You are in danger of falling and failing when you are arrogant to the point where you think the anointing of God on your life is because you've done something so wonderful. Uh -uh. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me tell you something. You ain't nothing without God. You better be careful walking in arrogance as if what you got, you got it on your own. Let me help you. It is the anointing of God that's on your life that allowed God to open doors for you that no man could close. You better know that the gift you have, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Which means just like I gave it, I could take it away. But what we've done, Brother Jeffrey, is we've gotten arrogant in what God has gave us to be a blessing. But in this day and age, y'all better hear me. In this day and age, you better know that the gift I have, God gave me as a gift. And if my gift is going to be life-changing, sometimes... I've got to be willing to give my gift as a gift. Oh, y'all don't like me here. How glory to God. What makes your gift effective is when I give my gift as a gift. But some of us, we've gotten so conscious and prideful that we won't work our gift unless it comes with a check. I know y'all not going to like me here. But when you charge, every time God wants to use your gift. Huh? Your gift no longer becomes a gift. Huh? Hallelujah. But now you've used your gift huh? as a way to prostitute the anointing of God on your life. Huh? Uh, now let me tell you yes, huh? people should not take advantage of you. Huh? And yes, huh? hallelujah, people should sow into your life. Huh? And yes, huh? you got to make church folk do right by you. Huh? But you better be careful huh? not to let the minute or the business of the ministry huh? take away the power of the ministry. You've got to know that there's sometimes where the 
Lord is calling me uh, to take my gift beyond the four walls of the church uh, and sometime to go in a nursing home uh, and to give my gift to people who can't pay for it. Uh, Y'all ain't liking me here. Uh, sometimes uh, God wants us to take our gift uh, and minister it to people uh, who can't sow into it. Uh, sometimes uh, God wants us to take our gift to people, uh, hallelujah, who can't advance us, uh, where the stage uh, don't come with lights and camera. Uh, uh, but God wants to know, uh, is there opportunities uh, where you've taken uh, to open your mouth for the glory of God? Uh, and where you tell God, uh, I'm looking for a check. Uh, I'm not looking for a stage. Uh, I'm not looking for men to make my name great. Uh, but Lord, what I'm doing, uh, I'm submitting my gift to you. Uh, and I want you to use me uh, until others are blessed by the gift of my life. Many times we can't use our gift on this level because we're not submitted to greater authority. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, to be in authority, you got to be under authority. You need someone who can pour into you to keep your gift as sharp as God's calling for it to be. My brothers and sisters, strong leadership destroys the wind of deception. Here, Paul is addressing men of God. He's addressing the divisions. He's warning the church to beware of the divisions that come amongst gifted people. As he is warning them about the divisions that come against gifted people, he lets us know that divisions are, or division is brought about through arrogant deception. My brothers and sisters, I, I really wanted to preach a shouting word tonight, and we may get there tonight, I don't know. But my brothers and sisters, I come to minister to a generation who is gifted. I come to minister to a generation who, who, who has ability but a generation who cannot be led. I come to minister to a generation where you are able to do the greatest things that our forefathers wish they could do. But a lot of times our arrogance deceives us into division. Oh, but my brothers and sisters, Hayana Shana Mahanda. I come back to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that we must be careful because this deception that's brought on by arrogance that ultimately bleeds into division. My brothers and sisters, it begins, amen, to hinder the authority that God wants to put on our life so he can use us for his glory. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is this type of deception that hinders the authentic presence of God in our life. Watch. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel God here. Hallelujah. I feel God because we are living in a place, my brothers and sisters, if you don't have someone over you, you have no one to pour into you. My question to you, hallelujah, with, with our gift itself, I'm talking to us, I'm talking to our millennial generation. My question to you is who's pouring into you? Who have you submitted? Submitted yourself uh, as a cup. Uh, you can't always be a pitcher. Uh, sometimes uh, you need to be a cup. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, see, the job of a pitcher is to pour. Uh, the job of a cup uh, is to receive. Uh, and my question to you uh, is if you are always the pitcher, uh, when do you become the cup? Uh, so that you can be poured into. Uh, but the only way I can be poured into uh, is when I submit myself to the gift of God uh, that the Lord has placed on my life uh, so that he might pour into me uh, because as long as I'm being poured into uh, I am always fresh uh, to receive the things uh, that the Lord has called for me to receive. Uh, this leads me to the crutch, amen, of my sermon tonight. Uh, uh, it is because uh, uh, we don't have no one to pour into us. Uh, it is because 
because we don't have anyone to rebuke us. It is because we don't have people to put us in order that we are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. My brothers and sisters, I, I call this wind a frigid wind. Uh, my brothers and sisters, wind uh, uh, is what changes the atmosphere. Uh, depending on how the wind blows, you know that a season is getting ready to change. And my brothers and sisters, we must beware of this shifting season. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, uh, but in the spirit realm, glory to God and prophet, you're a prophet. And I know you can probably sense this, but if you look at what's going on politically, in our world uh, uh, my brothers and sisters uh, there's a there's a wind blowing there's a there's a wind blowing there there's a wind blowing and and my brothers and sisters uh, I come back to tell you that the wind that's blowing uh, is not is not a comfortable wind uh, but this wind that is blowing in this season uh, it is a frigid wind uh, it is a wind that gets down to your bones uh, and make your bones shake uh, when you when you when you are afraid to know who's going to be voted in the White House, uh, you know that it is a frigid wind. Uh, uh, when the White House no longer holds the integrity that it needs to hold to represent a nation, uh, you know we are living in a frigid wind. Uh, when we can't keep integrity in the pulpit, uh, you know we are practicing or living under a frigid wind. Uh, hallelujah! When holiness uh, has no longer become the norm in the house of God. Huh? You know that we are living under a frigid wind. Huh? My brothers and sisters, uh, when the Bible no longer matters to those huh, who stand in the pulpit and proclaim it, huh? you know we are living huh, under a frigid wind. Huh? I heard a preacher preaching the other day and he said these words, I don't care what the Bible says, the fact that that phrase came out of a preacher's mouth that stands behind the sacred desk uh, lets us know we are living in a frigid hour with a frigid wind blowing and what scares me is that the world or the church uh, is being moved by the world uh, instead of the church uh, being the prophetic voice uh, that moves the world uh, when the world has become the prophet to the church uh, and not the church the prophet to the world uh, we are in a dangerous place huh? and church I am afraid huh? because we can tell you about your new house huh? we can tell you about your new car huh? we can tell you about the money coming to your bank account huh? but we have not warned you huh? that we are living in an hour huh? of the last day huh? nobody has warned us huh? that if we're going to make it in this season huh? we've got to get back to the truth huh? of the word of God huh? Because we're tossed, church. Huh? When the Lord told us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living, huh? the church is no longer standing, huh? but we are tossed. Huh? We are moved by the world. Huh? Facebook has become our new Bible. Huh? Hallelujah. And if social media says it's right, huh? then it's right. Huh? If social media says it's wrong, then it's wrong. Huh? But I come to stand there for uh, steadfast, uh, unmovable, uh, always abounding in the word of God. Uh, and I come to tell somebody, this is not the season to be tossed uh, to and fro by every wind of doctrine. It's a frigid wind, church. Oh, I told you, I told you this one might be a little hard tonight. Second uh, Timothy chapter 4 uh, says the time will come uh, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Uh, but after their own lust uh, shall they heap to themselves teachers uh, having itchy ears. Uh, my brothers and sisters, to be tossed uh, is to be moved. Uh, hallelujah by the climate. Uh, hallelujah. And to be 
be moved by what's popular. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but I come to shake somebody. Lord, I wish you could shake. I wish we could touch. I swear for God, I wish we could. Because if we would touch, I would have you shake somebody. And I will shake somebody awake. Because we've gotten too comfortable in just doing church. Hallelujah, glory to God. But look at somebody say, neighbor, this ain't the time to do church. This is the time to do God. This is the time to stand and let folks shoot darts at you. But stand knowing that God got your back. This is the time, hallelujah, to declare. I'm not moved by what's going on in this world. The world is trying to shake us. The world wants the church to shut up. The world wants the saints to stop telling the truth. But I need somebody. I feel the anointing. Hey, Shanda. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. Somebody on this line. There's an anointing falling on you. There's a power resting on you. There's a glory resting on you. There's a refreshness resting on you. And I come by to prophesy to somebody that he's getting ready to uproot you out of where you were. He's getting ready to uproot you out of the craziness you were in. He's getting ready to uproot you. And he's getting ready to pull you so you can walk in the places that God has called you to walk in. Lord, I feel the anointing tonight. I know that we ain't supposed to get close to nobody. But I dare somebody just get out your seat and just start walking. And the reason I'm walking is because God is shifting me. God is moving me. I'm walking out of the old. I'm walking in the new. Because God is tired. I tell you, get up off your couch. Get up off your bed. And just go to walking. Because you're walking out of the old and walking in the new. You get ready to shake off the frigid wind and walk in the fire. You're getting ready to walk in the fire of God. I got to close here because I feel the anointing upon me even now. I stop by to tell you that there's been a frigid wind that's been blowing on us, trying to stop us from going in the places that the Lord has called us to go into. But I, 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 I stop by to tell you that in this hour, even though there's been a blow of a frigid wind, the Lord would have me to tell you to not be worried about the frigid wind because the frigid wind that's blowing in this hour is a demonic wind that comes from Satan himself. But I heard in Acts chapter 2 about another wind that set up on the people of God. It was like fire that set on the people as cloven tongues. If you don't mind the day, I need you to do me a favor and look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor in the face and tell him neighbor. I stop by to tell you it might be cold outside, but I wish somebody so would catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. If you don't mind the day, I need you to lift your hands and I need you to tell God in this brand new season. I need a fire to begin to burn in me. I need a fire to begin to take loose in me. I came in cold, but I thank God tonight when I get off this life, I'm leaving here burning 
with the Holy Ghost. Who cares about this cold wind? When the Lord told me to tell you, you cannot be moved by the wind you feel. But when you step in the room, you got to be the thing that begins to set the tone. If you don't mind the day, if you don't mind the day, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, favor, favor. It's a day. You got to learn. I'm not to be a thermostat. You gotta be a thermometer. When I walk in the room, I change the temperature. Yeah. Look at somebody tell him, neighbor. God's getting ready to anoint you to change the temperature. You gonna change the temperature on your job. You gonna change the temperature in your family. You gonna change the temperature in your church because God is moving you to another level in him. And I know he's doing it because I hear him in my spirit telling me to tell you that I have not seen them and ears haven't heard them what God he's getting ready he's getting ready he's getting ready to do in your life what is he gonna do he's gonna anoint you afresh what is he gonna do He's gonna give you brand new power. If you know he's gonna do it, you ought to lift your hands up. Even while you're in your home, you ought to open your mouth. You ought to tell God, give me a new anointing. I came in here and my oil was low. But I thank God tonight, on the 10th month, the Lord is getting ready to release him. a brand new anointing. It's the 10th month. It's the 29th day. 10 is the end of a decade. 2 is the number of covenant. 9 is the number of birthday. The Lord won't be to prophesy. He won't be to tell somebody that the Lord is ending one season and you're getting ready to birth a new one. Lord, I wish I could touch somebody tonight, but I can't touch you. But you can point out your neighbor and tell a neighbor you can't be cold here, but tell the neighbor, you got to heat up in God. You got to heat up in God. You got to heat up in God. You got to heat up in God because you're getting ready to give birth to another season. You're getting ready to give birth to another dimension. You're getting ready to give birth to brand new ministry. He shut you down because he's taking you up. He shut you down because he's moving you to better. He shut you down because he's calling you to a brand new place in the garden.
You don't understand. They've been dogging me out. You don't understand. They've been running my name. Running my name in the mud. But I stopped by to tell you. Don't worry about it. Go to bed tonight. And pull those covers up above your head. Because we've been night and doer. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell him, neighbor, it'll be all over. 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 In the morning, yeah. It'll be over. Your joy is coming in the morning. The tears you cry. Sufferings of, of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory, to the glory. Catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. If you don't mind the night, you want to find five people. You some space. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Get you some space. Get you some space. I want you to prophesy to your space and say, The space I'm in is not a space of instability. Tell them, No, 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 no. Tell them, The space I'm in right now is a place of stability. Say, I'm going in this next season unmoved. Lord, I wish I had a church. If you at your home, I want you to get off your couch. I want you to get off your bed. And I want you to just turn that chicken off that you got on. Just turn that grease off for about 10 minutes because I don't want you to burn nothing. And just say, the space I'm in is a place of stability. The devil won't move me. No matter who gets in the White House, I won't be moved. No matter what's going on around me, I won't be moved. This is the place of stability. I'm getting my stability back. I'm getting my stability back. I'm getting my katana I'm getting my stability back. I'm getting my stability back. I won't be shaken. I don't care who break up, who break out. I won't be shaken. I'm standing. I'm pressing. This is my season. 
if you believe it, gonna leap it in your season. Gonna leap it. Gonna leap it in that place. Gonna leap it. Gonna leap it in that place. Sometimes we dance because the music is right. And then sometimes we dance because God has brought me out of something. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this dance you're getting ready to give God is, ain't got nothing to do with music. Say, neighbor, it really ain't got nothing to do with what you came out of. But tell him this dance you're getting ready to give God is a dance because of what he getting ready to take you. Say, neighbor, this dance is a dance because everything around me about to get stable. You better praise him, girl. That's what I'm talking Say, neighbor, 
I gotta leave y'all alone. Say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to be so stable in this season that blessings getting ready to follow me everywhere I go. Oh, that ain't the right neighbor. I said, look at him and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to be so blessed in this season that blessings getting ready to follow me everywhere I go. Look at the neighbor. I can't help it that I'm blessed. I can't help it that I'm blessed. of stability. God is bringing a sense of stability. Listen. Lord, I wish y'all was here. There's an anointing in this building. Lord, there's an anointing in this building. You better praise him for With the security going to praise him. Praise him, police officer. Praise him. With the police going to praise him. Ah! I love you. No, 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 You know what I hear in the spirit? Listen, 
the wind is blowing. It's turning because 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 the wind is blowing. Listen, I want to challenge you. Even everybody on this, this is what I feel in my spirit. I want everybody who's believing God, for God to begin to turn it, to get a hundred dollar seed in your hand. Everybody who sensed the turn, I want you to get a hundred dollar seed in your hand. Listen, this man is a prophet. This ministry is prophetic. And I want to prophesy that as God, as you begin to sow tonight, God is getting ready to release a turn in your life. I believe that. For everybody that's watching on this live, if you're sowing, I want you to say, I'm sowing with you, Bishop Dickens. I'm sowing with you, with, I'm sowing with you, Bishop. I want you to get that $100 seed in your hand if you're in this building and stand with me. I need everybody to do it. Who, who I need to do it? Everybody. If you're swiping, I need you to do that. Prophet, what is the... the okay. It's on the screen. The giving information is at... Is that, it's on the screen. I'm sewing. I want to challenge everybody who believe God. It's turning. Stability is coming. Can I tell you, as God begins to stabilize this church, as God begins to stabilize ministry, as God begins to stabilize you, things are getting ready to turn in your favor. This is the season to put seed in the ground. Because spring is coming. If you're sowing, do it quickly. Lord, I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. If you're sowing, say, Bishop, I'm sowing with you. Hallelujah. Brother Cleveland Brantley said, I'm sowing with you. Uh, Michael LeVon Lucas wants to sow. He's looking for ways to give. They're on the screen. He said, I'm sowing with you. I prophesy change even right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Bless you, Brother Tim Clinton. I love you, man. Hallelujah. Those who are sowing with me, let me know you're sowing. I need more people standing. Thank you, prophet. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor Weldon Smith said, I'm sowing with you, Bishop. Thank you, man. That's my brother. I love you, man. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jeffrey. Hallelujah. If you're sowing, I'm sowing with you. I'm looking for more online. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Elder Andrew Godfrey, thank you. Said, I'm sowing with you. I'm sowing with you. Hallelujah. Uriah Slaw said, I'm sowing with you. Bless you, man. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Barton says, I'm sowing with you. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Keith. He says, I'm sowing with you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. They're sowing with us. We believe it. This good ground. Somebody say, this good ground. This good ground. Somebody lift that seed high in the air and say, Lord, I thank you that as I'm sowing tonight, everything around me shall become stable. Thank you. The Lord said, change that. Everything around me is stable. Yes, Lord. As I'm sowing tonight, I declare, everything around me is stable. It is stable. It is stable. It is stable. It is stable. Stability is here now in Jesus' name. Begin to sow. Begin to sow. Begin to sow. Begin to sow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're still declaring, I'm sowing, I'm sowing. Yeah. 
all that I need. God will supply. If you saw it, you can come right now. All that. Everybody saw it. Come right now. All that I need. All that I need. God will supply. All that. Let's clap our hands for Jeffrey Golden. 